went into being Best Buy that's into a lot of major things. Tech support is very important. You know, so a lot of people was thinking you just go there and buy music and all that, but no, they're into a lot of major things, you know, going into the homes, helping the elderly people, you have to know exactly what it is. So just call them, and you know them geeks, they come out, hey, what? Hello? <laughs> you know, this ain't working. And you, you know, when the people that were born in the 60s. They were born in the 60s, they like, look, I'm not used to this. They will call you 20 times to get the same answer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. Okay. So we're going to get things kicked off with a fireside chat. So I have the honor of introducing who we will have on stage. So first up will be Hubert Jolie, and he is the chairman and CEO of Best Buy Company Incorporated. Mr. Jolie joined Best Buy in 2012 and led the company through its much publicized renewed blue transformation. The, cus the customer focused strategy resulted in improved customer satisfaction and employee engagement, as well as revenue growth, increased profitability, and market share gains. Now, Mr. Jolie is leading Best Buy into its next phase, Best Buy 2020, building the new blue, which is driven by a clear purpose to enrich lives through technology. The company seeks to do this by expanding the range of products and services it sells and evolving how it sells. So that's Mr. Jolie. Also coming to the stage is Rosalind Chevrul. She is the Senior Vice President of Human Resources at Best Buy. She has worked for Best Buy since 1999 and has been an officer at the company since 2012. In her current role as Senior Vice President of Human Resources, Multi-Channel Services in Mexico, she utilizes over 20 years of experience in leadership and human resource management. Ms. Chevrul works cross-functionally with HR and business partners to develop and implement operational solutions and effective human resource strategies that shape the culture and the employee experience at Best Buy. So please, a round of applause for the CEO and Senior Vice President of Human Resources. All of our team members here at Best Buy, welcome to our corporate campus. So very nice to host this event and a great opportunity for us to have a little chat, a little fireside chat. Just imagine the fire <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> with our chairman and CEO, Mayor Julie. Good morning. Sir. Good morning, Rosalind Chevrolet. He can it. He's been teaching me how to pronounce my own last name. <laughs> So I've got a few questions that I'd like to ask you and give you the opportunity to share some of your thoughts with our audience today. So first question, the conference theme is Stomping the Divide. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so, tech is the fastest growing sector uh, in the economy and thousands of jobs are going unfilled. And people of color professionals are vastly underrepresented in this space. How does that impact Best Buy? So before I answer this question, I, I would like to welcome everyone to our campus on a bright and early on a Saturday morning. Yes. Uh, you're welcome, and I want to also commend you for investing your time in professional development. Uh, it's a great, a great undertaking, and of course, tell you very clearly, without any ambiguity, that we'd love to have many of you join our merry band <laughs> as we move the, the, the company forward, uh, and we need a lot of uh, great uh, tech talent. I also want to recognize Greg and Krista for having led the way in founding BITS and uh, Enable. It's a great example of great leadership. You know, you start from your garage or your kitchen and you say, yeah, I'm going to change the world. And that's uh, so inspiring. So very grateful that, uh, uh, that you're, you're, you're doing this. To, to, to your question, Rosalind, uh, of course, you know, for, for a company like Best Buy, technology is critically important, right? We, of course, we, we have stores, we have our people, but you know, we have our website, our supply chain. We cannot do anything without technology. And the fact that there's so very few people of color in technology, uh, it creates a huge opportunity. That means we can change that. 
and uh, you know, the, uh, attracting, retaining, developing great talent is going to be one of the ways for us to grow our workforce and our talent uh, in, this, uh, in this area. So if you'd like to take uh, away one thing from the panel this morning is that uh, we're committed uh, to investing in talent and attracting and developing and retaining uh, you know, people of color, and in particular, you know, blacks, African American. There's the, a the gap between the population and the number of blacks we have on our staff is, is huge. So that creates the opportunity. It's also, of course, the way I think about it, it's, it's an imperative. You know, imagine a company that would dream of being successful and they would only focus on retaining a fraction or working with a fraction uh, of, the, of the population, you know, either you know, from a, a gender standpoint or a skill standpoint or a um, color standpoint. It'd be crazy. You'd miss, right? Imagine a store in Florida. Uh, do, speak, do people speak Spanish in Florida? Yeah. 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 Do they have visitors from Brazil in Florida? A lot. A lot. All right? Rosalind mm -hmm. works in, uh, lives in Florida, so she knows. <laughs> and imagine in that store that there would be nobody speaking Spanish or Portuguese. That'd be crazy. That wouldn't work. So it makes sense, you know, from a, from a business standpoint. It's a business imperative. And in technology in particular, one of the things I learned is that, uh, you know, inf infrared technology does a terrible job of recognizing black. Right? If you, if you don't have black people on your team, you're going to miss. You're going to miss this fact. And that's why in some hotels, when you go to, you guys know this, when you go to the bathroom, sometimes it doesn't work. You cannot trigger the soap or the water. Is that correct? Yes. That's crazy. You're going to miss if you don't know this. You're going to go bankrupt if you're a hotel company. That's not going to work. And so that's the, that's the second reason is that uh, you, know, you, you have to do it. It's a business imperative. And then, of course, it's the right thing to do from a societal standpoint. This country, like many countries around the world, we're not alone, is too divided. And I don't need to tell you, but the, the level of, you know, if we don't have hope, if we have fear in our black community, or any community, it's not going to be good for the country. And so I'm personally, everybody at Best Buy knows this, I've made a personal commitment for it to be part of my legacy to have moved the needle on that. And so that's why I'm here. You know, when the alarm clock is like for you, right? Around this morning, I would say, oh, I'm so excited, I'm going to work. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, yeah, it's more of a good cause. Yay. Thank you. Now, we recently refreshed our brand, and a part of that included us establishing a rallying cry. Let's talk about what's possible. And three guiding behaviors. Be human, make it real, and think about tomorrow. How do these things contribute to our diversity and inclusion strategy? Yeah, so there's so much to talk about here. I mean, one key message for this audience is that, um, uh, and, you know, the, the time at Best Buy, this is such an exciting time. You know, people, a few years ago, uh, uh, six years ago, some people, maybe you, thought that Best Buy was going to die, right? The internet was going to kill it. Anybody thought that? A little bit. Okay. <laughs> Anybody thinks this today? <laughs> Not dead. Do I look like I'm dead? <laughs> because we, we, you know, we found our way back. You know, we've ensured our prices were competitive, uh, and we've invested in the customer experience, both digitally and then in, in the stores. And now we're trying to create a, uh, a company that customers love, that employees love, and that uh, can grow. And, uh, and, and so we, we're in this journey where we said that our purpose as a company, purpose as a company is, is really important. It's not to sell TVs or computers. It's to enrich lives through technology by addressing key human needs. We can change that. We're in the happiness business. Okay? That's the business we're in. Uh, and we think the market opportunity is ginormous. And we think that one of the ways we're going to be successful, this, te this strategy needs to be powered by technology. And what President is referring to is how we've, in that context, we find our brand positioning. When I was the interim CMO during our turnaround, um, that didn't last long, fortunately, uh, we came up with this tagline of expert service, unbeatable price. And that was important because we had to convince people that we were price competitive, that you know, we match online prices, so the price is on the table, and we are experts and we provide good service. That was foundational. But now uh, we are elevating our positioning. It's about being an inspiring friend for customers. 
and helping them imagine what's possible with technology. And we know that this comes from within. So this guiding behavior of be human, you know, when, interact, when we interact with customers or with each other at the company, it's a, it starts with being human, meaning I need to get to know you. If you are a customer, what problem are you trying to solve? I'm not going to talk to you about features and things. What are you trying to accomplish in your life with your family? And that applies, that starts from within. So now I'm going to your question. Uh, uh, under Cami, so Cami Scarlett is a wonderful head of HR. Big round of applause for Cami. Mm -hmm. And Howard, Grace Howard, our head of diversity and inclusion. Round of applause for Howard. Uh, we've created um, a diversity and inclusion strategy. <laughs> Because we want to change, we want to move the needle. And this is not just words on a corporate website, this is real. We want to move the, the needle. Uh, and the strategy is four pillars. Workplace, so making the, the workplace a more inclusive uh, uh, place where people feel they belong. And I'm going to come back to that. Workforce, recruiting and retaining a more diverse workforce. Marketplace, using the power we have with our vendors to move the needle there, and community, and I can talk about our commitments to, to the community and the community work we're, we're, we're doing. And uh, last week, or two weeks ago with our board, we were in a distribution center in South California. And there was a panel of employees, and, and one of the, the, the employees on the panel, an African-American leader, you know, was saying that you know, we, we were just beginning on this diversity and inclusion journey, and I said, we, you know, we've not done much. And he said, no, 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 there. It has changed, we've changed the conversation because we've invested in uh, changing the dialogue and, and so being human. Because diversity starts with, so we have this basic idea. A company, any organization, is a human organization. It's made of individuals working together, more or less effectively, it's like in a family, right? Uh, in pursuit of a goal. And uh, with, you know, magic happens if we can connect the search for meaning that we all have in ourselves, right? Specific to humanity is the search for meaning. If we can connect our search for meaning with the purpose of the company, then magic happens. And as I said, the purpose of Best Buy is not to make money. We have to make money, but it's not our purpose. Uh, you know, we, as I said, we're in the happiness business. And so if we can connect the, the search for meaning with our purpose, then great things happen. And uh, so diversity starts with not labels, but each of us. I want you to feel that you belong here with all of you got, what you've got, your history, who you are, who you want to be, and so forth. And then, of course, we, we don't have to be naive. There's some systemic issues right, around diversity. Uh, you, know, you just look at corporate America, uh, look at boards. How many companies uh, have a board where there's a majority uh, or, or good representation of African American or women, right, across workforces? So there's some systemic biases, and then we have to address them. And so we felt that we need to start with that, with the workplace environments. And so Howard has done a number of initiatives around, you know, having the conversation. So we we call this candid conversation. So we, we do. Uh, in the theater, we, we, we have speakers, and we talk about the real tough uh, issues. Uh, there's training, uh, uh, reverse mentoring. So I have a mentor. Her, her name is Laura. She's a wonderful African-American woman. And every, every month we sit down, and I'm learning so much. She gives me books to read. Because we, all of us change us from within, right? I can, want, I can want to change the world, but you know, I need to first start by changing myself. And uh, so there's a lot of progress there. And it starts with our humanity, with our baggage, and our unconscious bias, and, and, and what have you. And then on the, so, we need, so that's the be human part. Um, make it real. If we want to change the composition of the workforce, just talking about it is not going to be sufficient. I can talk about it all day. Uh, but if I don't recruit to the right campuses, if I, if I don't have, you know, if my recruiting team uh, is all you know, people who look like me, not going to work, All right? So we've made some changes, and we're investing. We've created we've created centralized budgets to create opportunities. 
you know, uh, for, for stacking and for, you know, getting the, so we have uh, internships, and, and you know, sometimes teams, you know, their budget is tight. If you don't know in retail, margins are like reps, right? And so uh, if we don't create the breathing space for teams, so we have the centralized budget, right, Howard, that's really helpful for internships or for uh, bringing people from the field to headquarters and so forth. So there's a whole set of very concrete, very real activities. And we're going to be on a journey. And one of the things I've learned when you're on a journey is you make mistakes, you stumble, but then you pick yourself up. Right? Why do we fall, Bruce? What movie is that? Batman. Yes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that we can pick ourselves up. So where is, uh, and then thinking about tomorrow is indeed this, is investing in talent, recruiting, you know, so that's, you know, when we're done, and we'll never be done, but we have this wonderful diverse workforce. And it's not that difficult. It's difficult and not difficult. How do you change behaviors, right? You guys are leaders, you're growing as leaders. Big thing as leaders is we need to change, many times, right, in our strategies, we need to change behaviors. How do you change behaviors of people around you? Change yourself. By changing behavior. It's not more difficult. I get paid a lot to say these things. <laughs> <laughs> so for example, for our board, right? Uh, I'm very proud of this, so I'll, I'll, I'll brag about it. The majority of our board now is women. And as of two weeks ago, Kenny, we have two of our board members who are African-American women. How did we do this? Well, we just did it. That was not difficult. We don't have to compromise our talents and quality. Are you kidding me? You know, so just do it. Nike. Just <laughs> I'll stop you. <laughs> Actually, I, I just want to let the group know, um, we get the benefit at Best Buy of hearing you talk like this uh, from your heart, uh, from your purpose, um, on a number of occasions. Um, and and so, after that, you get bored. No, we don't, <laughs> we don't get bored. Um, and I'm just glad that we're sharing that with others. Yeah. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. You know, we've also made an out loud commitment to teams. Can you talk a little bit about to teams? Yes. yes. To the youth. Yeah. So, one of the big beliefs we have as a company is that we are a more than for profit organization, that we can do well by doing good. And that starts with the core of the company. This is not our corporate social responsibility thing, this is about how we lead, how we make sure that everyone at the company feels that they belong and that they can have a career, that they can grow, that they can have my job at some point if they're interested in working like crazy. <laughs> uh, that starts with this. And another dimension uh, or a part of this is our, our focus on community and, and you know, if, I, if we talk about purpose, my personal purpose is to make a positive difference on people around me and use the platform that I have, which is to the best buy, to make a positive difference in the world. That's what drives me. And uh, as part of this, it's not just about me, but as part of this, uh, we've had this commitment uh, on uh, helping working with disadvantaged kids, uh, teens, and give them access to technology skills. And the goal we've set, it's a bit of a crazy goal, but you know, sometimes good to be crazy, <laughs> is by uh, 2020 to each year uh, help one million teens, disadvantaged teens, get access to technology uh, skills. Part of doing this is through our Best Buy Teen Tech Centers. Uh, by 2020, we'll have 60 of them around the country. Matt, we are 23 now? 20. 20, okay. 21. 21, who's counting? That is counting. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, and, with a, and we have a big focus on the cities, right? Where, how many do we have in the cities now, Matt? Well, six by the end of the year. Six by the end of the year. And so these are centers that we do in partnership, in particular, for example, I was in Phoenix uh, earlier this week, uh, the Boys and Girls uh, Clubs. And so in these clubs, or it can be with the Ys and so forth, or in public libraries, we provide access to technology skills to these kids, and then there's a the focus that we're working on to provide the bridge between these centers uh, and then internships and then jobs. Five minutes, you say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, we were visiting one of them in, in Phoenix earlier this week that opened a month ago. 
the impact it's having is, uh, is really touching. And it's not just about the technology skills. It's these kids, you know, straight, keeping them off the streets, uh, learning soft skills. It's not just about the technology skills. It's really a well-rounded uh, uh, program. And uh, quite selfishly, if we can uh, develop these technology skills, uh, that can help build our recruiting pipeline. And in a few years out, uh, so let's think about tomorrow, you know, that can help us, uh, here, including here in the cities, but across the country, bring this recruiting pipeline. So it's one of these cases where we can use our strengths as a company. All of the vendor relationships we have, think about Best Buy. We have a relationship with the world's foremost tech companies. Yes, we do. And they're happy to partner with us in investing in these centers, and then think about the bridge link it brings to, uh, to, to, to internships and, and jobs. So that's the, that's the focus. And then we very excited about our partnership with the Bill and the Gates uh, Foundation. Everybody has heard about the, our commitment. So we're one of the few tech companies, one of a few tech companies, uh, that has uh, joined Bill and the Gates in our foundation in doubling the number of uh, computing graduates by 2025 who are women and of, uh, of color. So uh, I cannot commit to you that we're gonna change everything in America or in the world, uh, but I've always found that if we can change things that are just around us, it can create a big, uh, and make a big difference. So that's what we're doing. the conference, uh, maybe you could share a few words with the attendees about leadership. Uh, share your five views of leadership. Oh, yes, because all of us are growing leaders, right? Uh, and you're on a, uh, on a career. So, you know, thinking about uh, leadership and your career, that's an important uh, uh, thought. Let me start, before I talk about the five Bs, by some advice I got over the years from some of my best friends. Um, so the first advice was, uh, maybe 25 years ago, uh, I was young at the time. <laughs> and uh, I was asking a colleague, I was working with McKinsey and Company at the time, and I was asking a colleague, so give, give me some advice as I continue to try and grow as a professional. And the two things he told me were, you know, like, yeah, it's pretty simple, tell the truth and do what's right. And I said, Russ, I'm looking for useful advice. <laughs> he said, no, no, no. If you do these two things consistently, you'll stay out of trouble. And I said, okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, the five Bs um, about leadership. The first B is about be a purposeful leader. Be clear about your purpose as an individual. What do you want? What's the meaning of your life? What do you want to accomplish in your life? Be really clear. Is it to make money? Is it to be famous? Is it to, be, to do good in the world? What is it? And then connect that with the purpose of the company you're working at. If you're working at a company uh, and you're not, you don't feel their purpose, you don't feel that you can connect to their purpose. Let's imagine one of, you know, your core purpose is to do some good things in the world. And you don't feel that company has got these values probably not a great situation, but you feel that you can be connected to the purpose of the company, uh, then, that make, then, then that makes a big difference. So be a purposeful leader. Second, be clear about your role as a leader. Many of us grow up with the idea that the role of a leader is to be the smartest person in the room, and to make sure that everybody in the room knows how smart they are. That's wrong. The role, of the, 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 the role of the leader is not to be the smartest person in the world. There's nothing wrong with being smart, but that's not the main idea. The role of the leader is to create an environment in which others, the team, can be successful and can flourish. So focus on creating the environment, not doing their work, but creating the environment in which they can be successful. Third B, the third B is be clear about who you serve as a leader. If you believe you're serving yourself or your boss, or me as the CEO of the company, it's okay. You don't need to work here. You can be promoted to customer. <laughs> Being a customer of advice is pretty cool. You don't need to work here. If on the other end you believe that you know, you know, who you serve are the servants, meaning people on the front line. So imagine you're working in technology, right? And if you're uh, focused, passionate about giving tools to the employees or the customers that are gonna make a big difference, then that's the right 
that's the right focus, that's the right mindset. Fourth B is um, be a values-driven leader. Back to what my friend was saying, integrity does matter. It's really such an important foundation. It's not just about having values on your corporate website. It's how you behave when nobody's watching. Right? That's what uh, integrity is about. So be a values-driven leader. And then fifth one is be an authentic leader. Be yourself. Be your full self. Be the full version of yourself, the best version of yourself. Sometimes people talk about work-life balance. And work-life balance is important, uh, but it almost implies the idea that there's work and there's life and life is outside of work. I don't know about you, but some of us, and probably all of you, we spend quite a bit of time working. It's a big part of our life. And so if we cannot be ourselves in our work life, that's going to be pretty miserable. Now, and I know that in particular, I've heard that for uh, people of color, African American, it can be hard right, to not be ourselves at work. Try to behave, be somebody else. That can be hard. What my commitment is that we can create an environment in which all of us uh, can be ourselves and the best version of ourselves. Because if if we can be that, then you know there's a lot of good things that can be unleashed. We can be the full and best version of ourselves and so forth. And our role as leaders is to make this uh, to make this possible and not expect that everybody is going to have a French accent. Although. <laughs> No, that's not. <laughs> These are the five Bs. Right? I give I give them by alphabetical order, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so I don't really have to guess, but I want to reiterate: welcome. Uh, I'm amazed that all of you are investing your time in your development, and I, I think the program you guys have set up is just uh, a wonderful program. So I, I look forward to a great. Uh, a great day, and my ask is that, uh, you know, as you think about your career, is that you give us a chance that uh, you consider this by as a uh, as a potential opportunity, the opportunity to create to do great technology work. You know, people some, sometimes people think it's only you know, Amazon or Google or Facebook that uh, can do great technology work. You're going to be kidding. You know, the amount of technology work we're doing, and we're inventing a future that does not exist yet. And anybody who thought that, I mean, Amazon is a great company, don't get me wrong. I know there's a few people maybe in the room working there. I don't think they're going to die. <laughs> they should do okay. <laughs> but it's not a zero-sum game. We can create an amazing company that does things that are different. Some of them, some of them overlap. I mean, we, we have the same prices. We ship as fast as they are shipping. And, and you do it for free, by the way. Huh? <laughs> How cool is that? But then we do all of these other things that you were talking about, you know, the uh, uh, total tech support offerings. We go to people's homes. Uh, we have the multi-channel. I mean, there's so many cool things we're, we're doing. It, so. so it's an amazing time. So give us a shot. All right? You guys have a great day. And then we'll welcome Jessica. Have a great